Welcome to Secrets of the Past. Today we are going to be looking at the Seven Wonders of the Ancient World. The Great Pyramid of Giza, Egypt The Great Pyramid of Giza, located north of Cairo in Egypt, on the west bank of the Nile River, is the only ancient wonder of the world that has survived to the current day. It is one of three royal burial pyramids built between the 2700 and 2500 BC, including Khufu, Khafra and Menkura. Khufu, also known as the Great Pyramid, is the largest and most spectacular, covering 13 acres and containing more than 2 million stone blocks, weighing between 2 and 30 tonnes each. For almost 4,000 years, Khufu was the world's tallest structure. The nearly symmetrical Egyptian pyramids were constructed without the use of modern tools or surveying technology, which is incredible. Scientists believe that the Egyptians moved the stones into place with log rollers and sledges. The slanted walls, which were meant to resemble Ra's rays, were first constructed as steps and then filled in with limestone. In a futile attempt to deter grave robbers, the pyramid's interiors incorporated narrow passages and concealed chambers. Despite the fact that modern archaeologists have discovered some spectacular artefacts among the ruins, most of the pyramid's contents were taken within 250 years of their construction. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon The Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar II, according to ancient Greek authors, did the Hanging Gardens of Babylon near the Euphrates River in modern-day Iraq, approximately in the year 600 BC. The gardens were supposed to be planted as high as 75 feet in the air on a massive square brick terrace with theatre style steps. Nebuchadnezzar is said to have erected the touring gardens to help his wife get over her yearning for the natural beauty of her native Medina, which is located in the northwestern part of modern day Iran. People could wander the lovely gardens, which were supported by tall stone columns, according to later writers. The gardens would have had to be watered using a system consisting of pump, water wheel and cisterns to transfer the water from the Euphrates several feet into the air for the gardens to exist, according to modern experts. Despite the fact that there are several tales of the gardens in Greek and Roman literature, none are first hand, and no reference of the gardens have been found in Babylonian cuneiform inscriptions. As a result, most modern researchers assume that the existence of the gardens was based on a well-known but yet mythical story. The Statue of Zeus at Olympia Around the mid-5th century BC, the famous statue of Zeus, the king of gods in the Greek mythology, was carved by the Athenian sculptor Phidias and completed and set in the Temple of Zeus at Olympia, location of the ancient Olympics. The god of thunder was shown sat bare-chested on a wooden throne in the statue. Two carved phoenixes, mythical animals with the head and chest of a woman, the body of a lion and the wings of a bird, supported the throne's armrests. Zeus's statue was lavishly adorned with gold and ivory. It was so tall at 40 feet that its head almost touched the top of the temple. After finishing the statue, the sculptor Phidias sought a sign of approval from Zeus and according to tradition, the temple was struck by lightning. Before the Christian monks persuaded the Roman Emperor to close the temple in the 4th century AD, the Zeus statue graced the Temple of Olympia for more than 8 centuries. The statue was relocated to a temple in Constantinople during the period, where it is thought to have been destroyed in a fire in 462. The Temple of Artemis at Ephesus There was more than one Temple of Artemis in Ephesus, a Greek port city on the west coast of modern day Turkey. A series of altars and temples were destroyed and then restored on the same site. Two marble temples, built in 550 BC and 350 BC, were the most spectacular of these constructions. The Temple of Artemis at Ephesus was described by Antipater of Sidon as, apart from Olympus, the sun never looked on anything so grand. The original Temple of Artemis was created by Sir Siphron and his son Metagenes, a Cretan architect, and embellished by some of the world's most famous artists. According to mythology, the building burned down on July 21st, 356 BC, the same night that Alexander the Great was born. It was set ablaze by Herostratus, a Greek citizen who said he did it so that his name would be remembered in history. He was executed and the authorities made it unlawful to even mention his name. The construction of a new temple of Artemis began six years later. The new structure was encircled by marble steps 
leading to a 40 foot long terrace. There were 127 60 foot marble columns inside, as well as a statue of Artemis. Archaeologists argue over whether the structure had an open air ceiling or a wood tile ceiling. The temple was partly destroyed by the Ostrogoths in 262 AD and the ruins of the temple's columns were not discovered until the 1860s at the mouth of the Caister River. The Mausoleum at Halicarnassus The Mausoleum at Halicarnassus was a tomb built by Artemisia for her husband Mausolus, the king of Carnia, in what is now southeastern Turkey, after his death in 353 BC. Mausolus was also Artemisia's brother and legend has it that she was so upset by his death that she combined his ashes with water and drank them, as well as ordering the mausoleum's construction. The huge mausoleum was constructed entirely of white marble and was approximately 135 feet tall. The building consisted of three rectangular sections with a 60 foot base of steps followed by 36 ionic columns in the middle section and a step per mid shaped dome. The tomb which was embellished by four artists and had a 20 foot marble representation of a four horse chariot was located at the very top of the roof. The mausoleum was largely damaged in a 13th century earthquake and the remnants were eventually used to build Bodrum Castle. Pieces of one of the mausoleum's friezes was recovered from the castle in 1846 and currently resides in the British Museum in London together with other antiquities from the Heliconarsis site. The Colossus of Rhodes In the 3rd century BC, the Rhodians constructed the Colossus of Rhodes, a massive bronze sculpture of the sun god Helios that took 12 years to complete. The city was besieged by the Macedonians early in the 4th century BC and tradition has it that the Rhodians sold the Macedonians tools and equipment to pay for the Colossus. The statue was designed by the artist Cares and stood 100 feet tall making it the highest in the ancient world. It was finished in 280 BC and stood for 60 years until an earthquake demolished it. It was never reconstructed. Arabs stormed roads hundreds of years later and sold the statue's remains as scrap metal. As a result, archaeologists have little information about the statue's specific position or appearance. Most people believe it shows the sun deity standing naked holding a torch in one hand and a spear in the other. The statue was long thought to stand on one leg on each side of the bay, but most academics now agree that the statue's legs were erected close together to accommodate its enormous weight. The Lighthouse of Alexandria The Lighthouse of Alexandria was located near the city of Alexandria on a tiny island named Pharos. The lighthouse, designed by Greek architect Sostratos and completed in 270 BC during Ptolemy II's reign. It helped guide Nile river ships into and out of the city's busy harbour. Archaeologists discovered ancient coins depicting the lighthouse and inferred that it had three levels, a square level at the bottom, an octagonal level in the centre and a cylindrical level at the top. A 16 foot statue of Ptolemy II or Alexander the Great, for whom the city was named, stood above it. The lighthouse height has been estimated to be anywhere between 200 and 600 feet, although most modern researchers believed it was around 380 feet tall. Between 956 and 1323, a succession of earthquakes eventually damaged the lighthouse and it became an abandoned ruin. It survived in part until 1480, when the last of its remnant stones were used to build the citadel of Quit Bay on the site. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you have some comments for us, please leave them below. And make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and check out our other videos. Thanks for watching.